what we want to share were some free tools on the web that libraries are using for many different reasons and included in some of the ones that we have are some things on visibility, digital material, reader's advisory, sharing tools, citation tools, and keeping up with Web 2.0. I'm going to share with you some tools that we use here at NYLINK for some visibility. We use a Google tool called Blogger. Many of you may know it. Blogger is a free blogging tool that you can create your own blog. All you need is a Google username and password, which you can create fairly easily. A blog is a great way to get what's going on in your library or your organization visible. You can set the amount of messages that would be on the first page. We have five set. And then, as you see on your right, there's an archive so that people can monitor, again, what's going on in your organization. You can add different things to your blog, like widgets. There are different ways that we connect and share. We have, on your right-hand side, we have an emerging technology feed that has been put in, as well as our Flickr photos. Flickr is a photo sharing tool, and Delicious is a bookmark sharing tool. Digital websites, footnote.com is a place where original historical documents are combined with social networking in order to create a truly unique experience involving the stories of our past. So it's a really cool site, and it's used often by families who want to share different family histories. But it's also a cool way to, you could browse a historical era or see what recent members have discovered. So it's a tool you could use both for reference and for, if you have a small digital collection and you want to share it quickly on a free site, it's fairly easy to become a member. You could register for free, and you have access to pretty much everything except for the premium images. But other than that, you can create your own story pages. You could search and browse all images. You could spotlight images of your own. So it's a really, it's a very neat, neat site. Reader's advisory is a pretty, pretty common topic and something that I think is really, it's nice to have some of the tools that they have online to play with. It's just, it's never an easy, easy topic. Some things that we like to use here are library thing and booklets online. Google has some nice tools. There's also Google Docs, which is, you know, if you're going to work with somebody else on a document, you know, let's say you're creating a PowerPoint presentation or, you know, writing a paper with somebody, you can share that document back and forth and each, you know, each person can add to it. We have two tools that are used for creating wikis. We've used both of them here at NYLINK. Wet Paint is our newest one. It's really cool. With wiki with the eye at the end too. But it was kind of cool because you can change, there's a lot of different colors that you can change and you can use your own CSS sheet. So if you want to make it look more institutionalized and branded a little bit, you can upload your logo and change your background color and stuff. And that's a pretty one too. Okay. The last thing we have on here is free instant messaging, Mebo. And you can, if you have multiple, I know that there are some libraries using this for virtual reference. Right. I went down to the reference symposium at Columbia a couple of weeks ago and Yale was using Mebo. So they presented a paper on it and they are using it for virtual reference. They found it really great because if people were in two different libraries, and say someone comes to, you know, has a reference question at 
one library but they need to go to social sciences but they need something at the architecture library if the different librarians are signed up they can instantly take care of that question and they found it really useful the next thing we have some um, citation tools and these are ones that were actually sent in to us um, <laughs> um, noodle tools I, I checked out you know just when it got sent in a, it's an interesting tool um, about you know to create bibliographies it's also a way to um, organize research so it's a um, certainly a nice tool you know for um, students to work with I think it's fairly easy um, a slide that I skipped over is what's the word in their translation uh, tools and um, I somewhat like that other the other tool that Babelfish? oh Babelfish is one too I think this one is text. You take text and you put it into it, and then <coughs> it it a uh, it translates it. This is the There is yeah. There's a thesaurus. That the translator wouldn't load. For oh, the translator <laughs> wouldn't load. So this is a thesaurus that if you are if you are uh, translating, cool. you can um, switch your language. Dutch, English, German, oh. Italian, Spanish, and French. Random word. You can come up with a random word. The trench. Whoa. That's a That's tough for word. The economy. <laughs> Pound sizing. So this is a regular thesaurus as well as um, <laughs> a one if you want to find out what retrenchment is in French. It will. But in terms of to-do lists, Google another Google tool. Uh, Google Desktop has a little downloadable bar thing that you can put on your desktop and hide it when you don't want to see it. So you can download a bunch of mini applications to it. So you can have the weather on the top. You can have a little calendar, a to-do list. You can have like a little mini search box that will search your desktop um, for files, or it will search um, online. You can have it search Wikipedia. You know, thousands of different things you can add to it. Little mini calculators, just so it's all at your fingertips. And then because I love post-it notes, you can download a free post-it note application that will put post-its all over your, oh your desktop. Oh, I really and then could you use can that. roll them up when you don't want to see them or just delete them and they're color-coded. Oh, <laughs> so you can have pink ones and blue ones and yellow ones. Evelyn looks like she just put up the Yahoo Pipes website. Um, from here, again, you can create a free pipe. All it is is cutting and pasting the URLs of RSS feeds that you are interested in. And then... Mm -hmm. um, it gives you then a URL that you would use as your actual feed. Pinpoint scientific, scholarly, technical, and medical data on the web. Similar to uh, what Google Scholar is doing, except this is a much more specifically targeted. science. Yep. yep. Mark records. <coughs> I actually used this the other day for the first time. Well, oh, you did. Good. Yeah. Explain it because I'm not a Mark record person. Lynn Grassy Day and Lauren Pinsley swear by this program. They love it. Mark Edit is free, um, and I'm trying to remember why I used it. Oh, I used it because I wanted to turn Mark Records into XML. So you could there's a crosswalk to take your Mark Records and make them XML, but it's also a way of editing Mark Records. It's a free utility, um, and I don't know all the fun stuff you can do with it, but I was excited that I could turn my Mark Records to XML because I wanted to see if I could then format the XML file to kind of make a, you know, these are the newly added books to your library kind of. Thanks, everybody. We will send out on um, the slides. We're going to update with um, some of the things that people sent in, and then we'll send you out the PowerPoint presentation. Yep. And thanks to everyone. We appreciate